and welcome to the L. Pritchard Code Hour. Notice what I did there? Change the name on you and introduce an intro video. And I think that's kind of in line with where I hope this thing is going. It's not going to be perfect to get started. We're just going to keep trying to improve it every single time we do a new episode. And so to that end, I wanted to thank everybody who's been helping to promote, who's been retweeting, sharing, uh, information about the show on YouTube or on on Twitch and on LinkedIn. So thank you all so much, everybody. Especially thank you to the folks that have provided constructive feedback because I really use that to help make the show better and uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, by the way, that intro video was done all in Xamarin iOS, was uh, displayed on a iPad and I hope we get into that at some point in the in a future episode because that's really where stuff starts getting a lot of fun where you do a lot of animations and stuff like that. Now, if you are just joining us, my name is Lee Richardson and I have a coding problem. No wait, uh, that's a that's a different that's a different episode. No, it's not a different episode or a different show. This is the show where I live code Android and iOS applications using Xamarin and try to share as much code as possible and hope to share some of the best practices that I've learned over several years of doing this and a lot of mistakes that I've been making over the past uh, year so that you can not make those mistakes. And yeah, that, that right there is the siren. That is the siren of shame. Uh, normally that connects up to your continuous integration server and you can buy it on sirenofshame.com. I make these and sell them and and normally it alerts the team that the build has broken but tonight it's alerting you that I am being too honest. So I should go back to, uh, I'm a consultant by day and so I should probably be uh, telling you the way things actually are which is that I code everything perfectly and I know all of the answers and that's why I'm doing this so that I can share all the answers. Uh, but that's actually not true. Uh, the BS alert I think is going to go off here any minute. Now what, what actually is going on is that I'm hoping that you all are going to be able to chime in because this is live, right? So hopefully there's a chat room that you all are considering. You're just on the edge of your seat ready to tell me that I'm doing it wrong and we can all get better at this together. That's the idea. Hopefully it works that way. So we're also sharing this out on YouTube so you can see recorded episodes of it as well. And let's see, tonight's episode is going to be about Android. We're going to do Android layouts and build them out. And uh, the last episode that we did was mainly, mainly focused on iOS. And one of the things that I was unable to do and did afterwards was... Let's see, we had a problem here, if you may recall, in the main.cs, no wait, in the views, view main controller. And as you may recall, we were doing constrained layout calls and I tried to do these manually and one of the mistakes that I had when I tried to do them manually was I was not calling a particular method. And if you go into the comments over here on YouTube, you can see the uh, I commented on it. The problem was because I wasn't calling translates auto resizing mask into constraints equals false, which is the thing you have to do on a view by view basis to say that we want to do auto layout. So easy layout is something that is a Frank Krueger add-in. I mentioned that, provided a link to it down here, but also I just wanted to say that if you wanted to do it by hand, that's the method that you need to call. All right, let's get into Android. Before I do get started, I want to say that there's two ways that I could go about this. If I were to start a new Android project, Xamarin Android project today, it's probably different than what I'm going to show right now. And the reason is because the sort of default way that you get started, I've seen a lot of people do this. They, they'll start a project because they have a person that's an Android expert or an iOS project ex expert on their team. They've been doing things a certain way and that's the way they're going to get started. And the problem is that when you're trying to do cross-platform mobile, you want to be able to architect your solution in such a way that you're sharing code as much as possible. Especially in Xamarin Android, the default is, and the way that the even the file new project sort of leads you off, is to use a 
AXML files and styles and and themes. And so that's what I'm going to show you tonight. And in a later episode, I hope to show you what some of the pitfalls of doing that are and why it ends up being harder to share code. But for now, and, and that'll be a refactoring, so that's a little teaser for you for a future episode. But for now, I want to get started at least with something, and in the spirit of Agile, get this up and going as quickly as possible in the way that is sort of the default way of doing things. So, that said, we have not customized this code at all so far, and what we have started out with is a mainactivity.cs. Already, I would recommend putting this main activity into a folder, subculture for called views, where you've got all of your activities and views. But for now, I think this is good enough. And how we know that this is the starting point, there's a C-sharp attribute here, main launcher equals true, and that's how it determines where to get started. And when we started this off last time, we saw that we got a button. In fact, uh, Let's just run it now. I'm going to start the Jenny Motion Nexus 5. I talked a little bit about Jenny Motion last time and what a nice emulator, simulator, emulator, simulator, emulator, and what a nice emulator it is. Gets, gets started very quickly. That was fast. So we're seeing mobilecalc.android and hello world click me and when we click this we're seeing a bunch of clicks. Notice those nice animations there. Those are, I don't know if your frame rate's good enough to see that hopefully, but there's nice material design animations there. If we run this on an older emulator we're not going to see those. And I'm going to get into that later about how to support older devices with and still getting the material design, at least some of the material design elements using app compat. But for now Let's just start trying to implement our very first user story, which is over on GitHub. LP Richard. And this is the calc. Mobile calc. And we're going to take a look at the issues. You can see on start as user when I start the app I want to see zero listed in display. Oh, that should be easy enough. Maybe we can take this just a little bit further and also include some other numbers and some calculator functions and stuff like that. And just by the way as a reminder this is what we're trying to aim for. Nice to have a, a UI fleshed out that we're kind of aiming to, to match. Okay, now See, this is what I want to show you. So this code here in the main activity, again, an activity, I think I mentioned this last time, an activity is like a page in Android. And so everything inherits from activity at the highest level, at the sort of page level. And in this case, we're calling set content view on create is one of the Android lifecycle pieces. And we can get into the lifecycle a little bit later. I've got a great resource to show you that, that shows where all of the lifecycle events on pause and on resume come from. On create is getting started and it says we would like to use the AXML file which is called main and that comes from the resources folder inside of the layout and we've got a main.axml and at compile time there's a code generation thing going on which is creating this resource.layout uh, it's an enum. We can actually go inside of it. I hit F12 and go inside of it and you will see this code called resourcedesigner.cs is being code generated and every time you change AXML files and every time you create resources they get corresponding constants with random numbers associated with them put into this file and so you can refer to them. And so when I said over here, well when they said resource.layout.main, that's picking up this uh, number over here, and then Android at uh, design time, at compile time, is making the link for you. And then it's retrieving a button, and it's doing an on-click. Already in this code, there's a number of problems, and one of them is 
We're subscribing to an event, and it's really, really important to always unsubscribe from events. You'll probably hear me complain about this a lot, and it is really important to get this right. So uh, the default templates could use some improvement. Let's just go ahead and start fiddling with the UI. So over here in main.xaml, main.axml, there's a pretty good designer built into Visual Studio, and we can, and the same one is also built into uh, Visual Studio for Mac. If you're on a Mac, you get a, a nice UI too. I tend to spend a lot of my time in the source, but you can get a lot in here, and you, you've got access to all of your attributes. You can change the numbers of things. This button, for instance, could have a text. Actually, let's just dig in just a a little bit more into the default code that we got out of the box. This is the code associated with that AXML file, and check this out. This is saying at string slash hello, and that is being pulled in from values strings.xml, and this is how you want to do internationalization. If you need to ship your application out to multiple languages, you can have multiple of these resource files that will be in different languages. It makes things a lot easier. Our calculator, though, numbers are international enough for the most part, and so I'm going to do android.txt is zero. Let's just do a couple buttons here. Zero, one. What do we got? Let's do the bottom row. We'll do plus minus zero dot and equals. Plus minus zero. dot and equals is there a comment someone try the chat nope there's no chat okay so uh, one problem we have immediately here is that all of these buttons have an ID that is identical and that's going to cause problems so these these things right here are, there's a special syntax which gives each view inside of the activity a unique ID. So the at plus says, I want you to try to find an ID with this value. If it already exists, use it. If it doesn't exist, create it. That's what the plus is for. And if you just do it without the plus there, then it's just going to go and try and find a value of my button, which you don't typically want unless you're using an Android resource. But I'm saying I want to use my own resources. So these are good. And these IDs, by the way, how are we going to retrieve things when we're back in the C Sharp code? And we say, I want to go find button with a name of my button. OK, let's just, let's just start doing some more coding. So this is going to be equals dot. There are uh, some limitations on the, what you can give names. I think they cannot contain dashes. They have to contain underscores. By convention, they are lowercase starting, camel case. Zero and plus, plus minus. Look good so far? How do you think this is going to render? We don't even have to, one thing that's really nice here is we don't even have to run this inside of an emulator. We can immediately see the results. Okay, so here's the problem. We've got all of these things going horizontally. Well, that's because this is in a stack panel. Sorry, stack panel is a different language. This is, they're inside of a linear layout. What we want is probably a separate linear layout. And we want this linear layout to go like this. And we want the Android orientation to be equal to horizontal. And here's the thing that needs some explaining. Uh, every single view is going to need a layout width and a layout height. There are you can put in numbers in there, or you can put in two of these special values. One is called fill parent, which basically means if a view is in a 
space like this, and the view is maybe down here, it's going to try to expand as much as possible to fill its, in the case of layout width, it's going to try and fill its width. In the case of height, it's going to try and fill its height. The other possible value there is wrap content. And wrap content says, if I'm going to space this big, and I have maybe just like a little text box or something like that, I'm going to try to shrink down to my text box, to the text within my text box, if I'm a text box view, label view. So in this case, this linear layout, I think we want to fill, at the very least, we want to fill the width, right? And the height, mm, we could fill. Let's see what it does. Now, we just got a pl big plus button, and I believe that must have happened because the very first button here has an equals, wait, dot, where is plus? Hang on, let's look at that again. Oh, it was just the plus equals. And I think that may be happening because inside of this linear layout, let's start with filling with the width. If we said each one of these to wrap content for its width, now we should be able to see all of them. Okay, that's good, that's an improvement, right? But what we really want is we want all of these to go all the way out to the, to the far edge and each of them to fill an equal amount of value. And there is a property which is built into linear layout called, whoops, 125, which is called 225, which is called layout, Android layout weight, I believe. And I think if we give each one of these an Android layout weight, we can give them different values, or if we give them all the same value, they'll all just automatically fit. Let's try this. Android layout weight of one. Android layout weight of one. Android layout weight of one. And Android layout weight of one. Let's see how that looks. Hey, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right. Maybe we should test this just to make sure. Oops. I said this is fast, but I guess it's not always fast. Oh. Resource.id does not contain a definition for my button. Uh, you know what that is? That is a problem with the code behind inside of mainactivity.cs. It's complaining about this. That happened because the code generator, which was taking a look at our AXML file, regenerated resource. Re regenerated all the values in here, and my button is no longer one of the values. But equals is, and we probably want equals. Uh, similar to the way we did iOS, it's a really good idea to start organizing the code in here into very nice, tight, little concise methods, because otherwise you end up with spaghetti. It really happens quickly. I cannot stress enough how important it is to organize your code. I tend to like things like this, where I extract this into something like get views and here we're going to extract that into a field called I don't know equals yeah uh, yep. all right that and remember how I said it's a really good, it's a really bad practice to subscribe from events without unsubscribing? Well, where do you unsubscribe, you might ask. 
And the answer is whatever is equally balanced with where you subscribe. If you do it in on create, you can do it on dispose. But I think a little bit cleaner than that is to use the Android lifecycle. Uh, and I mentioned that there is a really nice website for the Android lifecycle. And I'll post this after the show, but I do pull this up quite a bit. There's a activity lifecycle here on developer.android.com and they've got a really nice chart which shows which shows the activity launching on create, on start, on resume, activity running, and then on pause can happen when another activity comes into the foreground. So if the user switches to a different app, but I believe it can also happen sometimes if the, oh yeah, that's right. That's the, the primary reason it happens. And then sometimes an on stop will happen automatically. So this on resume and on pause is a pretty reasonable place to subscribe and unsubscribe from events because it's an inexpensive activity. So we can override the on pause. And override on zoom. And now, if we go into on, let's see, on resume would be the right place. You might be looking at this and thinking, well, how are you going to unsubscribe from an anonymous, anonymous delegate? The answer is you can't. There's no way to do it. So what you actually want to do in this case is underscore equals dot click plus equals equals on click and now we have nice equal balanced feeling code on the plus and the minus on the resume and on the pause. So that's nice and clean. You can set breakpoints and ensure that's working correctly. Okay, let's try running it now and see what happens. And I think it took a little bit, a little bit for that last time, the, the last time I hit F5, because it was trying to parse out that AXML file and to compile it. And this is one of the things that ends up being kind of frustrating, especially on large Android projects, is if you have a lot of resources, that step where it's doing that parsing and generating that code file can actually take a really long time and it can slow down your build significantly. It's one of the reasons that I don't, I no longer am a big fan of AXML files and Android project, Xamarin Android projects. I like to do everything in code behind it. I think you can make things a lot faster and tighter that way too. But I think it's a really good idea to know the level of abstraction below the one that you're working at. And so understanding, and, and this, Android makes things so much easier when you're in AXML. You're kind of fighting the system a little bit if you, if you go away from it. But, there we go. But it's worth, it's worth understanding the default way of doing it. So that's why I'm gonna do this episode like this. Okay, so that, that worked. And I believe we should probably even, while there's nothing happening, yep, okay, just took a second. There we are. Uh, we got broken into a breakpoint, so that's working correctly. Okay, let's try to flush out this user interface a little bit more. Now we can use some of the similar techniques that we did last time to distribute rows evenly. We already have a linear layout. The root element of this AXML file is a linear layout. We can change this if we want to. And in fact, I'm a big fan of relative layouts, but in this case, the linear layout is a good, good starting point. It's a reasonable thing to do. Let's just duplicate all of this. 
What do we need here? One, two, three plus. And we can try doing this in the designer. Maybe it'll make things a little faster. That's interesting. It didn't work, and I think it didn't work because I've already broken a lot of code by using duplicate IDs. I betcha that if I call this button one, button two, button three, and plus. Save and go over to the designer. I bet you this works. What do you want to bet? Oh! He shoots, he misses. All right, let's try. Ooh. Do we just want to really simplify? Let's comment that whole thing out and just put in a button one. Let's see how that works. Designer's broken. Will it tell us if we try to run it? I often like to open up this output window here to get a sense of what's what it's actually doing. Sometimes it, it sits there and just hangs. Xamarin Android can be a little bit finicky, and sometimes it will just not do anything, and you have to... Well, that's really interesting. I was... I'm very surprised not to see that button there. I've got to tell you. Okay, we've got a width of wrap content, a height of wrap content, a weight of one. Maybe the weight's messing it up. Because, because it's in a layer layout. Ah, okay, the weight was messing it up because we're inside of a linear layout where one thing had a weight and the other thing didn't have a weight. Does that sound about right? I think that's right. Let's try it. Oops. We want to put in a weight here, and let's put in a weight here. Let's see how that looks. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, it's it's visible. That's something. I guess what we wanted for our height wasn't wrap content so much as fill parent. Right? Fill parent for this, and height is fill parent. Fill parent. Fill parent. Fill parent. And hopefully we get two two equal button that's equal filling the space. And yes, okay, that's good. And I bet if you mouse over, there's a document outline. It's not always visible. The document outline can be really handy to give you some kind of a sense of where things are. And you can see, uh, man, I can't point at the screen very well. Oh, I've got a cursor for that. Uh, <laughs> you can see that this this blue bar right over here is telling us that the second relative layout did its job, filled up the space equally, but the buttons inside of there didn't. So here's what we need to do. That is, we want our height for all of these buttons to be fill parent, fill parent, fill parent, fill parent, and now when the height is fill parent, the weight is one. The height is fill parent and the weight is one. These are all going to now, at least the bottom half, they're all going to fill the, the full screen. Okay?
There we go. That's looking decent. And now let's see if we can get back to getting our linear layout here working. Don't need this button here anymore. We can delete that, but let's just double check that we got a layout weight of one. We have a height of fill parent, a width of fill parent. That all looks good. And the last thing I think we wanted was our height for the should be fill parent for all of the things inside of here. Something like that. Let's see how that looks. On, you can do it. Yeah! All right. Excellent. Okay. Um, by the way, if a little keyboard shortcut here. If you hit F4, F4 pops up the properties window, and that makes it a lot easier to hop on over to. Yeah, there's ID. Should be that one. PQRS. T. I literally have to do my alphabet every single time. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's plus. Okay. Now we need more. More. But the thing is, we've got the basic pattern now. I bet you we can do this real fast. We just, by the way, I'm hitting Control D to do duplicate. I can't remember if that's a resharper shortcut or if that's a sharper or if that's a Visual Studio one, but it's a really handy one for duplicating things that you select. So alright, let's give these better IDs. This will be four, five, six, button four, Oops, button five, button six, and this should be minus and text here is minus, and the text here is six, five, four. Should we be bold? Should we be bold and just do a whole another one? Let's do it. Let's do it. This is more normally more code than I like to do in a feedback loop, but I'm going to be crazy. All right, this needs to be seven, eight, nine, and times button seven. Seven, eight, eight, and nine, and nine, and what, divided by, is that right? We will need to go back in and do some images. That will probably be more than we can accomplish in the hour tonight. Images will be fun. Images will be a fun episode because what we really want to do for that is do something that looks like that. We might be able to find uh, we might be able to find an actual Unicode character for that. But some of these other ones we're not going to be able to find a Unicode character for, and we're going to probably need to go into Inkscape and do a vector, do a vector diagram, and then import the vector diagram into into here, into Xamarin Android. And then when we pull the same resources into iOS, it's a lot harder to use vectors there. And so we're probably going to use the raster versions. And so I'm going to show you how to extract raster images, raster images. I guess we'll probably get into Inkscape a little bit because. No, that's kind of that's kind of fun. It's it's part of it's part of the whole experience. And then there's a process for converting from vector from that vector diagram in Inkscape back into the Android uh, way of of doing uh, vector drawables in XML. Whew, sometimes words come more difficult. Okay, we have something that's pretty good. Let's run it. Let's run it. Probably a good time to see if this thing works. And I think probably the next thing we want to do is put in a text box. And then we need to get into styles and themes. Hey, that deployed pretty fast that time. Not bad.
All right. Look at that. It's starting to look a bit like a calculator, isn't it? Yeah, those buttons are a bit tall. When we get these two more rows here and a nice big display area, then that'll get a lot better. Let's... Oh, what the heck. Let's go ahead and throw that in. Let's get all the boring stuff out of the way. You can, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can speed it up to 2x. I'll give you wild symbols when it's time to, to go back down to 1x. This should be button CE, I guess, and button C, and button back, I don't know, can we do that? Oh wait, we can't do that. We can't do that at all, can we? Wait! Slow down! Go from 2x back to 1x. I think what we need to do here, because we're in XML, and I've never actually done this, this is going to be crazy, I think we need to do ampersand L T semicolon dash. And the last thing we need is... Oh, I've messed something up, haven't I? I think I messed times up. Yes, this should have been... Huh, we're still running. This should have been... Button. Okay, you can go back to 2x now. Parent wrap, way out, lay, divide. This should be multiply. And it should have a text property of x. And this now can be divide, and I can have, yeah, there we go. That's looking a little better. Last but not least, we really do need a text area, and we can just plunk that right in here. Text block, no, they're called label. No, in iOS they're called a label, in in Android, they're called a text, text something, text view, text view. One disadvantage to swapping back and forth between multiple UI languages all the time is they always get the names of things mixed up. Okay, we need an Android ID equal to at plus ID slash, what should we call this text area? Does it sound good? Text, text display area? Let's we'll just call it the display. How about that? Sounds good. The width should be fill parent, right? We want it to go all the way out to the edge of the screen. And the height now. Okay, okay. This is a, this is a good conversation to have. Let's give it a let's give it a specific number. Now you might be tempted just to say we want it to be forty and see what happens, right? Problem is there is multiple different units of display inside of the Android system. So pixels is something that you generally try to avoid because pixels can be interpreted differently uh, on different displays that have different pixel densities. So Android came up with the concept of a device independent pixel, a DP. And the nice thing about a DP is generally they're going to display about the same on every single display. There's a formula that you can tie into if you ever need to for translating device independent pixels to actual pixels. Things like animations actually all use pixels and so you often have to do some math to translate between the two. The nice thing about iOS is it uses the same concept of device independent pixels. Every time you mention a number in iOS those numbers really are like device independent pixels but you don't ever have to worry about doing that translation because it always does that for you. Everything is by default pretty much a, a device independent pixel in iOS. They just don't call it that. So we're going to call this uh, 40DP. There's one more here that's a, a unit called an SP. Those are for fonts. If you have a font height or font size, you always want to, not always, you generally want to specify the unit type as SP 
and SP is something that the user can resize. So if you have a disabled person, a visually impaired person, that wants to zoom in the, the, the size on their Android device, SPs will scale according to what a user wants to, where DPs will not scale. So in a place where there's room for the text to grow a little bit, and it can grow up to like 20 to 30 percent, or, or maybe get smaller to 20 to 30 percent, then and it's okay to do that, then SPs are generally the best thing. Sometimes, even for text font sizes, you're still going to want to spay DP because you've got a lot of really intricate things going on and it really shouldn't change the size. Like, even if someone just, maybe they need to get a lot closer to the device, so, but SPs are good. But we're not doing fonts quite yet. We're just doing the layout height. We're going to say 40 no, DP. So we've got the height, we've got the width, we've got an ID, and we need a text for this thing and the text for this thing is going to say getting back to what we're trying to actually accomplish here when I start the app I want to see zero listed in the display How about that okay it's okay it worked there I think what we want is we probably want a background color and speaking of background colors we want this whole thing to be styled not with a dark theme but with a light theme and so that is where themes and styles come into play and those are that's a thing actually let's let's do this let's let's get this font size let's get the text size and l m n o Wait, wait, I know my alphabet. It's A, B, C, D, E, F, F, hang on. F, O, F, O, font family. Come on, there's no font size. Oh, I'm just doing code, it's so much easier. Android. Font. Man. Font. I'm going to have to look it up. So embarrassing. I should know this off the top of my head. Android. Text. Text view. Text view. Font. Size. That's how to do it in code, but yeah, how do you do it in XML? Text size. It should just be called text size. The yeah, autocomplete's not working, but it doesn't complain when I do that. Let's let's try that. Well, it worked. How about that? Seems to me that we want even more space in there. It's a good start, but we want even more space. We also want that thing to be aligned over on the right. So to get that, you might think that you want the text alignment property, but you don't want the text alignment property. What you want is the gravity property. And each view, I think this is a, a property on the, on the base view, has a gravity where it's like, do you want to pull the thing left or pull the thing right? It's actually a lot easier than HTML trying to do things like vertically align something center. Android. Gravity equals... I think you could say right and let's see. center equals center horizontal and I think you can do like bar right. Right? You guys are gonna be like who is this guy? How does he not know this stuff? Uh, that is correct. Honestly, I do most of this through code. 
So uh, text, gravity, gravity, gravity. I'm curious how it actually ended up. L, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah, that's to actually work. How about that? What did we just do? There's a linear layout there. There's a display there. What did I just change then? Whoa, don't do that. Undo, undo. What I really wanted was for this guy's text size, no, for its layout height to be 50. There we go. 50, let's try 70. Let's try 80. Well, that's starting to look about right, don't you think? Okay, and we wanted this center horizontal was good. And that actually did work. Right, and we would like to center vertical too, how about that? Center. Oh, hey, that's starting to look all right. What do we need, a little padding maybe on the right hand side of this? I think we can do H I J K L M N O padding right. Uh, you can also do so. There's yeah. There's padding right and left, and then there's padding start and end. And I guess the reason you might do start or end is because on uh, in Arabic language in in English anyway, and Spanish and I'm just like that's left to right. But if you're in a right to left language, then begin and end is more appropriate. So. We probably want padding start 10 dp. Okay, padding right 10 dp. Why didn't that work? Padding end. End. I guess it's the end. I guess it's the end even though we're right aligned. It's a little weird. Okay, but hey, it works. Let's do 15. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. I think that's. I think we can call that a commit. Let's call that a commit. By the way, one thing I did when I was fiddling around is I pushed this feature called manual iOS constraints. So if you want to go back over to GitHub and I pushed that up to the origin. So if you want to go over to GitHub and the mobile calc project, you can see the manual iOS constraints. You can see the code for that. Uh, we're here on develop. Oh, and I've put, been putting in tags, episode one, and when I finish up this one, I'll put in a tag for episode two. So let us commit that. We now have a much prettier main activity. It's a step in the right direction. And we have a resource designer file that we really probably shouldn't check in. Uh, maybe I'll check it in. Let's fix that real quick. Uh, this resource designer file, because it's code generation, you don't really want to, you just want to allow people to generate it themselves, right? I'll check it in this time, but um, the main XAML, we've got a lot of XAML code here, and we're going to stage those and say UI is UI is roughed roughed out in Android via AXML files. Uh, let's let's do this next. Um, we could take this so many different directions, but I think fixing the styling would be nice. So, if we were to go over to Jenny Motion, and it's worth just seeing what this is going to look like in API 19. If you're if you've got Jenny Motion, you can just add devices and download them. It's pretty straightforward. And if you are interested in which device API 19 is, I don't remember, but it's it's what my it's what my wife uses, which means it's pretty old. Actually, I've got one right here. If you're looking to test on physical devices, this guy see the cracked screen. That is something you can get for like 20, 30 bucks on eBay, and um, it's great for testing older devices. I'm going to combine this discussion of styles, themes, and app compat. Oops, wait a minute. 
build cancel we actually wanted to run this on 19 so we can see the results of installing AppCompat. So AppCompat is a it's a library released by Android. They've and and Xamarin has included the bindings and put it up as a NuGet package. So you can download the NuGet package, which then brings in the Android bindings to the Android AppCompat library, which allows you to bring in a lot of the 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 future features into older into older code. Right, so we're going to run this now and we're going to see the results of how this looks on an older device. And you'll notice, take a look over here and compare it to the newer one. You'll notice there's no um, bar uh, over here or back button. Hello? Oh, there we go. Okay, we want the. Easy layout. No, not easy layout. That's a different project altogether. We'll get into easy layout.droid another day. This is mobile calc. Uh, so you can see the buttons look different, and this bar area up here is actually going to change a lot. And when we bring in AppCompat, we're going to get a bunch of other things. So let's do it. The way you do it is a typical NuGet where you're going into References and you say Manage NuGet Packages, and that's how you pull down code that's been published up to the NuGet repository. We're going to browse and we're going to say we want Xamarin.AppCompat, I think. Doesn't look right. Let's just search for AppCompat. It's this one. V7 AppCompat. Do it. I accept. I have no idea what I just accepted. I probably just signed away my newborn, future, all my future children. Oh well. It was worth it. It was. At, wouldn't you say it was worth it? Whew. All right. This is going to take a little while. tell you a joke. Oh, no. I can spare you. It's about to finish. So, Descartes walks into a bar, and the bartender says, I'm sorry, we, we're, out of, we're out of beer. All we got is wine. Is that a... Would you, would you be happy with a wine? And Descartes says, I think not. And he disappears. Yeah, that's a philosophy joke. You have to look up who Descartes is to get that. All right, so that downloaded. That's good. The next thing we need to do in order to take advantage of that is we need our activity to inherit from the AppCompat version of an activity, which is going to be Android dot app. Android dot how about app compat activity. That should be right. That should be right. Okay. And now if we run this on the API 19 device, I think we will see it look better. Just for free, without anything else yet, other than just those two changes. But things get a lot better once we introduce the theme. So themes and styles. Styles are like cascading style sheets in that you can say each view in Android has a has a style and that style you can override like the the weight the color the font size the font family you can override all of those things and put them into the style well you can also use a theme where you apply it to everything in your project so you can see so you can make all your buttons turn white on dark or dark on light oh boy well, now we've really messed it up, haven't we? All right, well, for now, you might just need to trust... Oh, here we go, here we go. You need to use a theme.atcompat theme. Oh, well, that was the next thing I was going to do. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, I was just starting to tell you a little bit about themes. Themes are specified... The default theme, anyway, 
is specified inside of this fancy XML file here called the Android Manifest. The Android Manifest is where all of the metadata lives about like the version number and stuff. And so I believe that goes into app, and we don't actually have one, I'm surprised to see. Okay, let's look this up because I'm going to get this wrong and IntelliSense is not helping me out. So this is um, Android, yes, Android Manifest uh, theme. And hopefully I don't even have to click. It's just going to say, <laughs> ooh, how about that? So cool. The internet. Internet is amazing. Okay. So Android style theme dot mm, we need theme dot app compat dot light, I think. And let's just hit a five and see what happens. Actually, let's let's use our own well yeah. Android manifest theme app compat dot light. In this case, they're going to use their own theme, I betcha. Yeah, this is good enough. This will work. So we're going to go into the resources, and we're going to go into... Uh, we're going to go over on time just a little bit. But if we can finish this up with a light theme and an app compat working, this will be a great episode. Values, we need to... By the way, there's colors you put in here, too. That's a common thing. I was hoping to get to that this episode, but I didn't get to it. All right, add new item. And can we just make it an XML file? Thank you. Okay, and we'll call this themes, themes.xml. Seems like a reasonable file name for something we're going to store themes in. And I think we call this resources. And actually, let's just copy and paste this, let's see if that works. And so we're going to give this a name of, this is where you get a little inheritance going on. They're inheriting from, this is like um, implied inheritance where there should be a, another style called theme and another one called proftstudio.actests. So they didn't quite do this right. This really should just be, we don't need any inheritance, not yet. Uh, we just want calc um, theme. Calc theme? Sure. And we want to inherit from theme.appcompat.light. That seems like a pretty reasonable thing. Calc theme now is what we want to refer to on our Android manifest file. So we ought to be able to say at style calc theme. Let's just hit five. Feeling good. It's going to work. This is already getting further than I was expecting it to. It's going to take a very long time. So, oh, oh, I think this might have just spared you from another joke. It compiled. This is good. This is a good sign. A good sign. Hey, 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 how about that? How about I'll put a little hand for myself there. Okay, you'll notice that these buttons don't have the nice animations that you'll get on later API devices, but already this is looking a lot better, right? It's looking a lot more material themey, And we can now just, just double check that this works over in our 22 device. There's absolutely no reason it shouldn't. And we're gonna see all of this switch out and look an awful lot like a calculator with a very little code very little code. Next time hopefully we can get into the little the little menu bar, the hamburger menu. I'm hoping in a future episode we'll be able to get into navigation to other screens and back again. 
So, like, being able to do, being able to do this, going to a screen, select something, and returning the results in Android and iOS is harder than you would expect. It really is harder than you expect to go to another page, come back, and return the values from that other page, or to pass parameters. Returning parameters is, is hard, too. Uh, the nice thing about this is we're going to be able to get into a recycler view. Recycler view is another thing that you got as a result of App Compat. Okay, there we are, and look at those, look at those pretty animations. I think we've only got 30 frames per second going, but hopefully that's enough to give you a sense of what nice, pretty animations we're getting by default. All right, I think that about wraps up the episode for tonight. We've gone about an hour, and it is actually now called the Elprichar Code Hour, so probably ought to try and honor that. Thank you for sticking with me, if you did indeed stick with me this far, and I hope that you will subscribe to the YouTube channel. I hope that you will also consider subscribing to Twitch and come and watch live and provide feedback and tell me that I'm doing it wrong. I would greatly appreciate that. And as always, I do very much appreciate, I'm going to find the right button here, as always, I very do much do appreciate you signing in and your feedback, and I hope to catch you next week. Until then, I am Lee Richardson. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.